Hello students, my name is Sunil Ranjan and in this session I have come up with the topic the war poets and that is an important topic for the students of English literature in many universities across the world. Well, here I begin. As the World War I broke out, a great number of young people died in the trenches. Most felt the duty to do so. They acted on an impulse, thinking it was an honorable thing to go and fight, even die for one's country. War was glorified as a noble thing. It was the question of honor. That was the usual way in which poetry was written. In poetry, war was usually depicted as an honorable, glorious affair. Thousands of young men left their homes with this conviction. However, those very few who survived the war returned changed, wiser, more cynical. They experienced the first-hand horrors of the war. Many turned to writing, became artists, trying to escape from the trauma of war. The name war poetry might be misleading somewhat because it is actually the anti-war poetry. The poetry presented attack against the whole ideology of nobleness of war. They are not modernists in terms of form or language they use. I am talking about war poets. They are modern. It is a kind of modern poetry, naturalistic and painfully realistic, with shocking images and language intending to show that the war really is devastating and the war poetry showed the mud, the trenches, death and sometimes even compassion for soldiers. The overall message through such poetry is that war is brutal, vicious, meaningless, stupid and barbarous. There was nothing honorable, glorious or decorous about the war. The daily experience of soldiers on the front was of mental disorders, nervous breakdown caused by constant fear and pressure. The war poets questioned the very notion of war, heroism, patriotism, etc. They attacked the values of the pre-war society in general. The war poetry is a negation of Georgian poetry. Georgian poets were considered as modern as one can be. They were very patriotic. Their poetry was very artificial, bombastic. Their favorite themes were the beauty of the English countryside and their poetry lacked any poetic or philosophical depth. They regularly presented war as a noble affair, as an opportunity for the young Englishmen to ennoble their lives and turn from ordinary citizens to heroes. To them, the war was seen as something giving the chance to young people to become ennobled by the experience of the war. However, the war poets adopted quite opposite views of the war and of the Georgian society. Most prominent among them were Siegfried Sassoon, Wilfred Owen and Isaac Rosenberg. War poetry differs from the poetry which came before it, namely the Georgian poetry. So a clear break is made from the Georgian poetry. They communicate strong anti-war messages. For war poets, the war is unnatural, meaningless, foolish, brutal enterprise in which there can be no winners. It is not a noble, heroic enterprise. Now, different attitudes to war. This is the heading. Under which, there is a subheading that says the reaction to the war passed through different stages. Number one, the patriotic enthusiasm that led many to join the army, like the poet Dupert Brooke. Number two, anger, when many realized the lie of war propaganda. It became the main subject of Sassoon's poetry. Number three, compassion, as we can see in Owen's poems, 
His poetry is a sort of elegy for the young soldiers he admired. And number four, Rosenberg had a detached and unsentimental view after the war. Now, coming to the war poets one by one. So the first one is Rupert Brooke. He is a war poet because he wrote five sonnets in 1914 in which he tried to testify the safeness of the war by stating that war is clean and cleansing. He says that the only thing that can suffer is the body and he considered death as a reward. He used traditional forms and his poems show a sentimental attitude that disappears in the works of the other war poets who experienced the real evils of the war. After his death, he was seen as a new romantic hero. So now, coming to another war poet, Siegfried Sassoon. His reaction against war was violent and he expressed them through irony in his poems. He protested publicly against war. He wrote a declaration against the war and read it in the House of Commons. And there he said, I am making this statement as an act of willful defiance of military authority because I believe that the war is being deliberately prolonged by those who have the power to end it. I am a soldier convinced that I am acting on behalf of soldiers. I believe that this war, on which I entered as a war of defense and liberation, has now become a war of aggression and conquest. I believe that the purpose for which I and my fellow soldiers entered upon this war should have been so clearly stated as to have made it impossible to change them, and that, had this been done, the objects which actuated us would now be attainable by negotiation. I have seen and endured the sufferings of the troops, and I can no longer be a party to prolong these sufferings for ends which are believed to be evil and unjust. Sazun's, Sazun's poems are collected in The Hold Huntsman and in Counter Attack. He denounces the political errors and the sacrifice of soldiers. He describes the physical horror of the war through anger and satire. What he achieved was not compassion, but the spontaneity of shocking and realistic detail. He was a pacifist. Now coming to another war poet, and that is Isaac Rosenberg. He differs from the other war poets. His poems can be seen as modernist in technique. His vision of the war was unsentimental and he did not care about the pity of the war. He presented realistic and shocking details, sometimes through irony or paradox and contrast. His language was scriptural and elemental as he called it. Now, the last one to come here is Wilfred Owen. His poems are painful and are about men who have gone mad or men who are clinically alive although their bodies have been destroyed. He uses a lot of assonances and alliterations that give his poems a haunting quality. He uses para-rhymes for Instance, loves and lives, seeds and sides, star and stir. He denounces the evils and the pity of the war. His poetry is not about heroes. His poetry is just about the war and the pity of the war. He wants to awaken people's conscience and criticizes war propaganda. So here I come to the end of this topic and that is the war poets and my dear students if you have subscribed to my channel it's good if you haven't i'll suggest you to subscribe to my channel so that in other videos you get to know a lot more about english literature thank you thank you very much